everyone, today we are right here with this beautiful view and this beautiful sunset in Mazatlan. And today we're going to tell you what not to do when you come to this gorgeous city. So let's start. The first don't is when you arrive at the Mazatlan airport and after you get your bags, do not go up to the people with the taxi signs trying to get a taxi. I know it's a little bit confusing, but you're going to walk right past them and to your right, you're going to see the official taxi booth. And I'm gonna put a picture of that on the screen right now so you know what to look for. And there you're going to buy an official taxi to your hotel. You can also order an Uber from the Mazatlan airport. However, when we arrived, Uber was quite a bit more expensive than an official taxi. The taxi was 480 pesos or about 25 US dollars at the current exchange rate and that was going for anywhere in the Zona Dorado or like basically any one of the main hotels most people are going to be staying in along the coast. And it used to be the case that you had to pay with cash to get a taxi there but now they do accept cards. The next thing you shouldn't do is when you arrive to the Mazatlan airport don't forget to check Google Maps for the best route to your hotel because coming from the airport there's a free road and there's a toll road. And for us, it was going to take 50 minutes taking the free road or 30 minutes taking the toll road. So it was well worth it to save that extra 20 minutes because the last thing you want to do after a long day of travel is spend even more time in a taxi than you need to. So definitely check that out. Now, depending on the traffic situation during the time of day when you fly in, and depending on what hotel you're staying at, you might be better off taking the free road. But look that up because our driver would have taken the free road if we didn't ask him to take the toll road. Now, if you ask your driver to take the quota, in that case, you're probably going to have to pay the toll. And the toll was 55 pesos or about three US dollars. So you will need some pesos if you want to take the quota on your taxi ride to your hotel. But trust me, it definitely worth paying that 55 pesos because otherwise you can get stuck in traffic for a long, long time. And let me tell you that a lot of people here in Mazatlan told us that especially if you're arriving around 5 or 6 p.m., traffic gets worse. So just consider that when you are here. In this case, how can you tell your taxi or Uber driver to take the quota or the toll road in case he doesn't speak English? Well, you should tell, ¿Podría tomar la carretera de quota, por favor? And that's everything you need to know so it will take the shorter way to your hotel. Another thing you shouldn't do, or it's not necessary to do, is to rent a car because luckily here transportation or at least uber it's way cheaper than in other time like in other parts of mexico and also the service is super fast so every time we order uber we just have to wait for a couple of minutes to arrive and also there are another ways of transportation like the aurigas or the other ones like the pulmonias yeah the pulmonias and they are like way more expensive like three times or double price a time actually a guy told us that the minimum like the minimum fare of that was 150 pesos i don't honestly know if it, that's real or not but that's about what you're gonna have to pay and comparing to uber it's gonna be like 35 to 50 pesos to move whenever you want to go especially to malecon or something like that but if you want to have fun bring alcohol dance and enjoy super loud music it definitely worth paying the 150 pesos of the audi gas or the pulmonias yeah so i would say do do try the aurigas and the pulmonias maybe once during your trip to see how much you like it but for the majority of the time take uber or hop on one of the buses it's like 12 pesos per person to go anywhere you want along the coast and like last night we were going somewhere and a pulmonia was going to be 150 pesos which is like the open air golf cart style cars that you see around or an uber was 50 pesos so an uber was one third of the price so taking uber everywhere or hopping on a bus is going to save you a lot of money when you come to mazelan Oh, and another tip you should consider is that if you are choosing a pulmonia as your way of transportation and the way it's super cold as the way it is right now, you should definitely take a jacket with you, otherwise you're gonna get a flu. <laughs> another reason why it's 
completely unnecessary in my view to rent a car is pretty much no matter where you're staying, no matter what hotel you're staying at, you have a ton of stuff within walking distance and there's just so many other modes of transportation. Whereas we went to Cancun recently and there we were staying at a very isolated resort with absolutely nothing within walking distance. I mean, the closest store would be maybe two hours walking away <laughs> and like no other transportation options except buying the super overpriced taxis from the hotel where it would cost like $50 to take a taxi 20 minutes. So in that case, yeah, we really, really wanted to have a rental car, but here it's not like that at all. Like all the hotels are super close to convenience stores and pharmacies and grocery stores and bars and restaurants and other hotels, so lots of stuff super close to you here in Mazatlan, which makes a car kind of unnecessary. Another thing you shouldn't do is to forget on doing a reservation, especially if you are going to one of those restaurants or nightclubs that are super famous here in town. Because actually we didn't never made a reservation and our time of waiting to get to one of the restaurants was about half an hour and yesterday we tried to go to Cantaritos, a very very uh, like popular place here to like party and have drinks and things like that and the first thing that they asked us was well, like do you have a reservation and we were like no but we can wait like we've been waiting all the time for like a half an hour no problem yeah and they were like we actually cannot allow you to get in and maybe if you come back around an hour and maybe you're gonna get in but it yeah. was a lot of maybe so we definitely left <laughs> <laughs> so if you don't wanna be through that be smart and make a reservation <laughs> yeah don't be stupid like us <laughs> but uh, that place that cantaritos place is pretty cool because we were looking at the menu and you could order like a 20 liter <laughs> cantarito and if you don't know what that is they're gonna pour like an entire bottle of alcohol in there mix it with some juice maybe some soda depending on uh, what kind of cantarita you get <laughs> but if, if you want to party that's a place where you're gonna get where you want to go quickly if you know what I mean while we were here we went to the aquarium and honestly like for me I'm like I've I've seen one aquarium I've seen them all like I didn't need to go to the aquarium uh, because I, I just feel like I, I've seen that kind of thing before uh, but the other people in our group wanted to go so I just like yeah sure why not but then we got there and they have this incredible sea lion show. I didn't know these sea lions could do anything like this, but they do so many tricks. They knew how to clap and kiss people. Like they were standing on their podium the whole time, jumping through hoops, doing all sorts of tricks, balancing a basketball on their nose, playing with each other, doing like acrobatics. It was insane. So this don't is do not miss the sea lion show if you're going to the aquarium. And if you're bringing kids to Mazatlan, I think this would be an incredible and super memorable activity for them. And also, let me tell you that they're about to open a new aquarium. So unfortunately, oh. we couldn't visit that one because it's not open yet. But they told us that it's going to be one of the biggest in Latin America. So actually, the first one, like above this one, it's the Brazil one. But it says it's bigger like in the land extension. But this one is actually going to have much more species of animals and much more liters of water. So I really hope that the time that we come back, we can actually make a tour in that new aquarium because I'm so excited. And we are going to come back because this trip has been incredible. We, we both love our visit here and we definitely want to return quickly. Another thing you shouldn't do is be scared all the time about not being safe. Actually, when we were booked our flights to Mazatlan, I was super scared because like two days after we bought the tickets, we heard all that news about the narcos and things like that. But actually, when we arrived here, we discovered that it's a pretty nice and safe place. We went out walking yesterday night and actually I never felt unsafe. So as a Mexican, I can tell you definitely that it's worth coming here and just being free. And also all the streets are super full of lights, are super crowded all the time. The police, it's like just hanging around, but actually I saw less police than the amount of police that, for example, I see every day Querétaro. So, 
actually you shouldn't be worried uh, we were asking the same to my friends and all of us feel the same like we feel super safe here and we've been walking a lot obviously we haven't been on like on the roads like lake at night and things like that and the other like security measures we have mentioned before but in this case don't worry about it and my mentioned that she didn't see a lot of police while here and, and you might think oh well isn't that bad because then there's less police uh, protecting and patrolling the area well generally when a place is more dangerous there's more police like if a place is really dangerous you'll see police and military and uh, people with like big machine guns all over the place but here there hasn't been much which is a good sign that it's actually pretty safe and another sign that it's actually pretty safe is that everybody is going out at night and it's a very lively city uh, with people not being scared to go out and things like that are pretty good signs that it's actually a reasonably safe place to visit. If you're liking this video, please subscribe to the channel. You can do so for free with the click of a button and we'll have many more videos like this one coming out very soon. So click and share. If you like a little bit of an adventure, the next thing you should not do is miss the hike up to the lighthouse. So if you're gonna do this, you want to go in the morning or in the evening. Do not do this in the middle of the day because it can get really hot and you have to be in decent shape or at least be willing to do some work because it's going to be about a 45 minute hike to get up to the top but once you get up there it is worth it they have a glass lookout area which is definitely something you should check out and the views from up there at the top of the mountain where the lighthouse is located is incredible so another thing you should know and it most of the time makes people get confused is that you take if you take an Uber on a, or any other kind of transportation it's going to leave you at the base of the lighthouse it will never take you like to the place like it's not even possible to go it, up it's impossible to go out like to go up so in this case you have to walk and after that you have to go up through 3036 steps 336 so you can, so you can like arrive to the top of the lighthouse and in this case be sure you are wearing comfortable shoes be sure that you're wearing comfortable clothes that you take some water with you forget totally about fancy clothes i know it's a very <laughs> uh, like lovely place to take a lot of photos but trust me comfort and security <laughs> is first so another thing you shouldn't do it's like to about like to avoid yourself from going to the those chain restaurants especially like for example panama which is very famous and you can see as much as panama as you can imagine almost in every corner but actually you think that when it's like a chain restaurant its quality might not be the best but in this case we went and we loved it it's actually like the food is delicious, the quality of the meat, it's extraordinary, everything is super good and its prices are super affordable. There are a lot of restaurants that had a lot of change like El Muchacho Alegre, etc. Like they have like two or three locations around Mazatlan and definitely it's worth going. Yeah, it seems like a lot of the best restaurants here in the city are opening up multiple locations. So there's like the Looney Bean, Rico's Cafe. I had one more on this list, if you'll forgive me and let me look at it. Uh, Totem, uh, that was really great. We had that this morning for breakfast and it was incredible. Highly, highly recommend that place. And at Panama, you had the Pie de Guayaba. Yeah, so uh, I mean, I love eating healthy, but in this case, allow yourself please to enjoy this amazing desserts and extraordinary food here in Mazatlan because it's like one of the places where everything you're gonna eat it's gonna be extraordinary so the pie the guayaba and another different combination of dishes are definitely something that you're not going to find anywhere else so you definitely should go for that and forget for a little while about the calories extra <laughs> and also while you're here do not miss the incredible seafood now there's going to be no shortage of places where you can get awesome seafood 
Uh, like we went to El Muchacho Alegre and we got this shrimp platter for four people which had different kinds of shrimp like one with stuffed with cream cheese another I think was wrapped with bacon another one was breaded uh, maybe coconut shrimp on there and, and some others but anyway it, it was really good but I'm not saying oh you have to go to Muchacho Alegre I'm like literally go to probably any restaurant here and get some of the incredible seafood that Mazatlan has to offer yeah and also that oh, another thing that i think it's extraordinary is that you can basically find seafood like at any time of the day you can find seafood and shrimp for breakfast for lunch for dinner <laughs> whatever so i mean i i was the kind of person that i used, didn't used to like like a seafood for breakfast but this time I, I gave myself the chance to try new things and oh my gosh i don't regret at all so definitely should give a try of just trying and like enjoying all this experience of Mesotlan. Yeah, this morning at Totem we both had that marlin and shrimp quesadilla which was amazing but then we also splurged a little bit not caring about the calories and got the tres leches french toast. But yeah, lots of great food options here in Mazatlan. The food has been incredible. Don't miss it. When you're coming here from another country you could get hit with a ton of exchange rate fees. Now a lot of people will bring dollars here and just spend their dollars everywhere, but I don't usually recommend this. Sometimes it actually is in your favor to pay with dollars at a business because the business doesn't keep up with day-to-day -day exchange rates, but that's the exception, not the rule. And most of the time you're going to be losing about 10% with the exchange rate that the business is charging. Another popular way is to bring dollars and then take them to a money exchange store and convert them into pesos. And then at the end of your trip, whatever you have left over, you convert back into dollars. Well, with this, you're going to lose five to 10% on those exchange fees each way. So you're going to lose a lot of money with either one of these routes. But what I recommend is to bring a credit card with a zero foreign transaction fees preferably a Visa or a MasterCard because those are going to be accepted almost everywhere. American Express is still good, accepted at about 90% of places that accept credit cards here. So that's a great option as well, as long as it charges zero foreign transaction fees. Now, when it comes to foreign transaction fees, pretty much every credit card that's branded as a travel card, so, so that might be like Southwest Airlines, Delta Airlines, American Airlines, or any one of the hotel chains, or other things branded as a travel credit card, well, those probably are not going to have foreign transaction fees, and that's going to be your best method to pay for things while you're here. You will need some cash though, so don't think you can use a card for everything. So bring some cash with you, but plan to put most of your expenses on that no foreign transaction fee credit card. Another thing you shouldn't do is to forget that a lot of like very nice businesses close on Sundays. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's something that we didn't expect it and we wanted to go to uh, like a Fabrica the Suaves, which is like one of the most typical candies or desserts here in Mazatlan and unfortunately it was closed. And by the way, those Suaves are like marshmallows with coconut on the outside. Yeah, and also we wanted to look for some artesanias and like mainly the whole artesania stores were closed. So if you're planning to buy artesanias or desserts or whatever, do it from Monday to Saturday. Unfortunately, Sunday was our last day and that's the day we went out trying to do that, so avoid our mistake there. Another thing you shouldn't do is forget that Mexico is a tipping culture. So when you arrive to your hotel, you're gonna leave a tip for the person who takes your bags. A lot of times when someone cleans your room, maybe you'll uh, tip the housekeeper. That's not quite as common as it is in the US, but it is still a thing here. Also, in restaurants, when you're going to a restaurant, tipping your waiter or waitress is about 10% of the bill is pretty common in most of the country. However, in a place like Mazatlan, where it sees more tourism than most places, well then, the average tip is bumped up to about 15% at restaurants. One way tipping is different here though, is it is not customary to tip taxis. You just pay the fare and not tipping on top of that. I mean, you, you can if like they're helping you with your bags or something like that, but in most cases you don't tip taxis. Another thing you shouldn't do is allowing yourself to enjoy. So as soon as you arrive here, the party feels everywhere. There's music like banda and reggaeton literally everywhere. So 
don't be too shy just allow yourself to dance you don't need to know how to dance actually just move enjoy and remember that we only live once and also people here is super friendly nobody's going to judge you nobody's gonna tell you anything if you're dancing in the street just feel the moment because <laughs> definitely this is one of the best places to have fun and enjoy the whole day yeah i couldn't believe how friendly people are here it just blew my mind it was incredible it's it's still incredible <laughs> The next thing you shouldn't do is neglect to learn a little bit of Spanish before coming. I highly recommend learning some basic greetings. People are going to appreciate that a lot. And also, in addition to that, try to learn some numbers because when you're talking to vendors, when you're interested in purchasing things, knowing some numbers is going to help you out a whole lot. If you're interested in building your vocabulary a little bit, there's a couple of free apps that I recommend. One is Memrise and a second is Duolingo. But if you really want to get speaking full sentences and actually learn the language, well then I recommend a more advanced course and I can recommend no other more highly than Rocket Languages. It's an incredible course and a great value for the money. So great that I became an affiliate. If you want to check it out, you can go to tangerinespanish.com. That's my affiliate link and it will take you right there. Awesome course, worth checking out. And they have a 60 day money back guarantee. So if you're dissatisfied with it for any reason, which I don't think you will be, you can get your money back. But anyway, tangerinespanish.com, go check it out. And something else I think you should not miss is the observatory. Unfortunately, we did miss it this trip, but we really, really wanted to go. It looks absolutely gorgeous. You get to see some of the history of Mazatlan from one of the best views in the entire city. And the grounds up there are super beautiful and you can enjoy a nice drink at their bar. It's just a really cool place from all the things we hear about it. So check out the observatory when you're here because we will be doing that for sure the next time. Something great about coming over here to the west coast of Mexico are the incredible sunsets you get over the water. So something you should not do is miss the incredible sunsets while you're here in Mazatlan. Thanks for watching and click this video next to see the vlog we did while here in Mazatlan. I think you're going to learn a lot in that video. And if you like it, please subscribe and share this video so other people can learn about it and don't make the same mistakes. <laughs>